Thank you for the opportunity to present this talk. Um, my talk is about 3D rendering with OpenStreetMap data. And the focus is on basically everything in OSM that's not a building. Why am I presenting this talk? I'm presenting this talk because I'm the maintainer of a 3D rendering software called OSM to World. Um, a 3D renderer called OSM to World which is, of course, open source software and is designed to create 3D models from OpenStreetMap data. These models can then be used for various purposes. It can be used as a library in other programs. It can export the models to a modeling format, for example, Wavefront OBG, and it can render the model directly using OpenGL. So, for example, my software can produce uh, 3D scenes rendered with OpenGL, such as this example. It can be used and has been used for game development. For example, some users have tried creating super tux cut race tracks from OpenStreetMap data using my tool. Users have been experimenting with virtual reality or creating art and videos using OSM to work. Um, if you want to preview the abilities of osm 2 world without installing it, there's an online map that's using leaflets, so it doesn't show the full capabilities of the software, but it allows a quick glance at the functionality. Unfortunately, we recently migrated to a new server hardware, so it's not fully operational again. Um, sorry for that. Okay. That's about the software. I wanted to mention it because, well, A, some people may not have heard of it yet, and B, it's a context for what I'm going to talk about. There's a tagging standard called Simple 3D Buildings in OpenStreetMap, which is, is essentially the current standard for how we model buildings in 3D. Um, not everyone may be familiar with 3D rendering and 3D tagging. So the general idea of simple 3D building is you just draw the building as normally. Alternatively, you can also draw smaller parts of the building, so like a single tower, a single component, a single uh, smaller area inside the larger building. And you can just add text to them. So you can tell the software how high the building is, how many levels it has, which color the building and its roof have, which material it has, what shape the roof has, in which direction the roof faces. So it's really simple, and well, it works with normal OpenStreetMap tools. So this is not new. This gives you 3D buildings like these ones, and it has been around since, well, 2012, when it was defined at the second uh, 3D workshop in Gaiching. Um, this is now supported by lots and really lots of applications that consume this data. And despite its limitations, it's well established. There's really, well, an understanding what these tags mean. Lots of methods use them. There are presets, there are tools, there are chosen plugins everything you want to work with it. But because simple 3D building is essentially the single most established means of adding 3D information to OSM, it's often overlooked that a 3D world needs more than just buildings. And I want to focus a bit on what else we already have in OpenStreetMap data that can be used to enrich a 3D world as rendered by an application. So, well, OpenStreetMap has streets in the name, so it's obvious that we have a lot of road data, we have a lot of railway data, 
and these can be used already today for 3D rendering. So to start with, you get a lane number, you get a width for, the, uh, for each lane or even for the road as a whole. Uh, you can render a basic road shape. But it doesn't stop there. You can go on, for example, to tag sidewalks. You can go on to add surface information. You can even do this on a per lane base or add it for individual sidewalks, individual cycleways. And you can get relatively close to describing the geometry of a road with simple tags on a single ray. Additional tagging systems exist, for example, um, for lane tagging, for tagging uh, overtaking rules that can be used in 3D rendering context to infer, um, infer the actual road marking. So depending on the country's traffic law, overtaking rules might be uh, represented by dashed or solid road lines. So all this information, which was not collected for the purpose of 3D rendering, can nevertheless be used to make a 3D map more realistic and closer to reality. Other examples include, for example, pedestrian crossings, like this, or turn lanes using the widely used turn column lanes uh, key. This is not as common, but Mappers has already started years ago to map traffic signs, and of course that's also something that's nice to have for 3D rendering purposes. Again, these were not originally mapped for 3D rendering, but they are nevertheless very useful for that purpose. So now we're leaving the realm of established tagging and getting into more experimental territory. Um, this is an idea that has been floating around for quite a few years. Uh, the idea that a single ray cannot, in all cases, accurately describe the shape of a road. So mappers have, in some parts of the world, started to add an area in addition to the centerline ray that describes the extent of the road surface. And the probably most popular key for these kind of areas is area highway. So because it had gotten some traction in the OSM community, I of course started looking at how this could be used for 3D rendering. Now, one of the challenges here is I want to keep the ability to do the things I showed before. So I want to continue being able to, for example, render, render lanes, render sidewalks, and so on. And to do that, I need to somehow divide the road into well, several strips, essentially, separ several lanes. And that's not as easy as it sounds, because these road shapes can, in theory, get arbitrarily complex. Um, this has not been finished in OSM to world yet, but I want to nevertheless present what I've implemented so far as a bit of an, well, perhaps adding a few ideas to the discussion and maybe getting some feedback how other people have solved the problem of processing highway areas. So my first attempt was um, essentially what makes a single way so comfortable is that I can just create a line that's orthogonal to the way. And if I do that at each node of the way, then I get a, well, simple, model of the way, so I say this is five meters to the right of the center line and can simply follow one of these green lines to the right side and, for example, draw a curb there that separates the sidewalk from the road. This is a simple approach and it works for cases like this, but it does not work especially in uh, curved sections of highway areas where you will get overlapping angle bisectors. So in those situations, I decided I needed a separate mechanism. 
And the separate mechanism is uh, run length along both the centerline way and the outline um, way. So I do what I did before, remove those lines that were marked in red, which are self-intersecting, and I instead interpolate along the center line and outline ways for these sections between each pair of successive green lines. And this works so far, so it's relatively promising, and I'm currently working on building a 3D rendering implementation for highway areas based on that general idea. I mentioned, well, railways. I don't want to talk as much about them as I did about roads because, well, mainly because not uh, very experienced in the topic of railways. I mean, there are railway enthusiast mappers who tag a lot of things, but I don't really understand that. So if I want to, well, render these realistically, then I need the railway community to well, help me with that. And that's one of the ways I'm asking for help. Um, if you are interested in a particular topic in mapping and would like to see this topic represented in 3D rendering, if you're essentially an expert for that topic, then please contact me and help me understand these complicated tags. For now, my railways well look like this, and they support a few tags like railway gauge, but not much beyond. OK, so one of the central ideas that I wanted to present is that OSM already has a lot of data that's useful for 3D rendering, even if that data was originally mapped for a different purpose. And another category with that case is street furniture. So for example, you have advertising billboard nodes and lots of tags on them. So you have hate tag, with tag, two-sided, so if there's a poster on both sides or only on one side. And people actually map quite a lot of these sub-tags. So a promising approach I found with 3D rendering is creating procedural models. So if I just create a single model, for example, in a 3D modeler, and place it at each location where an advertising billboard node is placed, that may look good, but it may, doesn't make it as easy to, well, interpret all these additional subtags that mappers have also added to those nodes. So I'm trying to, well, make the software smart enough to understand these subtags. Other examples are, for example, bicycle parking. There are lots of different variants, some more comfortable to cyclists than others. So of course, these differences have been mapped, and these differences can be rendered. And well, roads, railways, and street furniture are not everything that's in OSM. There's a lot more. So for example, 2D maps have already started a few years ago to um, render pitch lines. This is something that I feel also enriches a 3D rendering. So if you have some lesser pitch areas, then you can mark them with sport tags and potentially other sub tags and get it rendered in 3D in a more realistic manner than if we, I just displayed a colored area. You get things like water slides or barriers like jersey barriers, guardrails. And what I've also noticed is that a lot of these different ray-based tags can be rendered with a single algorithmic approach, which is essentially extrusion, which is something that uh, 3D modelers have been using for a long time. So you have essentially a two-dimensional shape and uh, extruded along a path. You um, essentially uh, well, draw it out uh, into a three-dimensional shape. And for example, the first shape when extruded gets you the uh, part of the guardrail. This extruded with a few gaps in between gets the jersey barriers, and another shape extruded gets you these 
bought that light attraction. OK. At this point, I'm just going to add a few more things that can be 3D rendered just to give you a bit of a taste of well, what's possible. And many other things that are not shown could, of course, be possible too or, all, or are already. So for example, railings, chain link fences, gabion walls, other walls. Again, there's a lot of subtext people add. I, I'm always amazed how, um, well, people are interested in things like how high is this wall exactly? Is this a brick wall or is it a concrete wall? And, well, of course, if people go the length to add these information, uh, I want to also show them on the map, which is why I try to support as many of these tags as possible. Power lines are another topic, um, has been in OSM2 world for quite a time. And even things like man-made flagpole can look better in 3D if you add a few subtracts. So this was a tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more. But still, despite OSM having that amount of data, despite OSM being such a rich data source for 3D rendering, there are things that we probably will never put directly into OSM. So for example, we have 3D buildings, but can we really model like the Eiffel Tower in OSM? Or, I mean, we can place a barrier bollard node to represent a bollard, but bollards come in a lot of sizes and a lot of shapes. And this distinction may actually be a, a bit beyond OSM. This is why there has been recently a launch of the so-called 3D model repository, which is essentially a website where you can uh, upload 3D models and link them to OSM. So you create a 3D model with one of the tools that, well, are specialized for that kind of task, for example, using Blender. We heard a talk about that yesterday. Or using like non free software like Ketchup. And you upload this model to that website, link it with OSM using one of these um, slightly cryptic IDs, and well, you get a 3D model in Renderer that supports the 3D model repository. This can be like a model of a particular park bench that has a distinctive shape, or it can be a historic building. It can be essentially anything that can be mapped in OSM just with more three-dimensional detail. A small limitation, OSM2 World has not yet finished adding this feature, but there are other 3D renderers you already supported, and I'm, of course, also working on building full support for the 3D model repository into OSM2 World. OK, so a talk like, talk like this wouldn't be complete without, well, telling you how you can help make my software better. And of course, um, what's always welcome is help with coding. So there are a lot of things that are already being rendered. There are a lot of things that are not yet being rendered, despite being in the OpenStreetMap database. And the reason is simply, well, it takes some time to program this. And if someone wants to help me, I help is always welcome. Um, I'm also looking into WebGL front-end development because this uh, map I linked before is still using Leaflet, which is not ideal for, uh, well, WebGL, well, for any 3D map, really. And WebGL would empower a more interactive presentation without having the user download the program onto their own computer. There are other topics listed here where I would also be interested in people who know about them and who want to be involved with helping OSM2 World get better. There's also a lot of non-coding work, though. So for example, I mentioned before, people who know a lot about a particular topic, like railways or even advertising devices or traffic signs in a particular country, these things are topics I don't know a lot about, and if someone 
tells me how the real world looks, it makes it easier for me to implement it in OSM to World. I'm also always looking for better textures, better 3D models, because that requires more art skills than I have. Render style improvements, like for example, adding localized version of particular things, like the lines of the road look different in every country, and people from that country will be better than I am at telling OSM to world how to make it look just right. And for example, also making it easier for people to install the software, all these are ways to help OSM to world get better. But of course, probably the most important way of helping OSM to world is add even more data, continue mapping, and add more of that fantastic level of detail that makes it possible to even think about rendering 3D worlds using only OpenStreetMap data. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Tobias. If someone has some question for him. What's uh, the current number of uh, 3D models uploaded to 3D model repository? What, what, uh, what is the current number of 3D models uploaded to 3D repository you mentioned in the talk? I still didn't get the beginning of the question. Can yes, how many 3D models? Um, we currently have like a few dozen. Um, we are probably soon going to get an input from a predecessor of the 3D model repository, the um, Open Building Models Project, which will boost those numbers significantly. So we are still at the beginning, but I believe it's a promising start and would love for more people to contribute models to the repository. Okay. Someone. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Tobias.